Can you hear all of us? <laughs> happy, happy, happy Thursday afternoon live, Facebook fans. Um, welcome to the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company Thursday afternoon live. Got a beautiful day in the Iowa Great Lakes today. Um, it has been sunny but cold. It's just been cold. It hasn't really committed to spring yet. And the walleye fishermen have been earning their fish. I think uh, um, by, the time, by the time they get their limit, their hands are too cold to clean them. I've noticed that myself. Sometimes their limit is too. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Uh, anyway, it's a nice day today and it warmed up pretty nice. And I think we're gradually easing into summertime. Heading toward warmer weather. So that's going to be nice. And we see uh, around here, everybody's getting ready. They're sprucing up and cleaning and construction like crazy going on and new businesses going in. And it's always interesting to see what new. We got Domino's Pizza now. Domino's Pizza. Um, just just all of kinds us. of new uh, businesses springing up. And, and it's kind of fun to see. And a lot of boats on the lake. And you drive all down ready. through Arnold's Park and and quite a parade of boats underneath the bridge already. Mm -hmm. And some of the, what do they call it, libation establishments, is that <laughs> yes, a word? That is. Um, are starting to become more frequented. Yeah. And the outside, uh, outside pubs are, people are starting to venture outside and it's yep. getting to be summertime around here and we're gonna have tourists like crazy here shortly. No masks, you don't see the masks that we did a few weeks ago? I, well, Maybe you should, but you don't. <laughs> but we don't. <laughs> um, if you joined us the last uh, couple weeks, we showed you um, making artificial bird parts. Yep. And uh, if you want to take your work to the next level, um, I mean, for years and years and years, we mounted birds with the original heads. And one time, I think Frank Neumeyer came out and he said a bird bill shrank 18%. Now, I don't know how Frank knows 17 from 19, but he said 18%. And I kind of wasn't sure I believed that until I took an artificial replacement bird head, you know, a reproduction okay. bird head, and held it next to a mallard that I had done a couple years previously. And oh my gosh, the shrink was astonishing. Um, a customer really doesn't notice that when you mount one bird for them and they put it on their wall, you know, eight feet high, um, they don't notice the amount of shrink that goes on, but there is a lot of shrink and a lot of distortion because all of that tissue, it's not bone, it actually is yeah. cartilage and tissue and skins and, and uh, it does shrink. And as far as bird feet, the same thing with bird feet. I know of three ways to preserve um, bird feet and one is to inject them. Mm -hmm. And that's probably, though that works really well, it's probably, the least accurate. It's much better than doing nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and it does plump them up. And if you get really um, good at it uh, and you um, inject and babysit them and things like mm -hmm. that, I think you get a really, really nice um, full foot. But if you just inject them and go home at night and come back the next day, a lot of times yeah. they've shrunken down because the injection fluid got someplace where um, maybe you. Uh, you know, didn't want it, there's voids in there and things like that. Then the other thing would be freeze dry. And we sure. used to have a freeze dryer. We had a mm -hmm. wonderful freeze dryer. We loved yes, our we freeze did. dryer. We spent more money <laughs> keeping our freeze spent. dryer running. Um, we, we had some of the most beautiful work ever. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have to rebuild fish, fish heads, heads near as much. Oh, and you could rebuild uh, um, or Fish fins, fish fins nice and, and bird feet. And uh, Corey liked to do his pheasant waddles. He would take his oh, yeah. pheasant waddles off of the skin, position them on his heads, and freeze dry those, as oh, well as the feet. Nice. Um, freeze dryer is a wonderful machine. And then um, $10,000 later, we thought, we don't need a freeze dryer anymore. So we go back 500 to- 500 bucks a month. I have $500 a month. Um, freeze dryer is a great, fun thing to have. Um, and then the other thing would be casting them, casting your bird parts. And with, uh, Corey makes the, or models the raw, um, Wildlife Illusions bird heads for us. And we mold them here in house for, for Wildlife Illusions. But um, like I mentioned, every chance I get, 
um, Erling Mark said these are the finest heads in the world, and uh, we get that comment a lot. They're exceptional, and um, we'll have a maybe a tooth out of place on one or two of them. But as soon as the manufacturing process and the inspection process is phenomenal, the minute the minute anybody inspects these and there is a tooth missing, provided it had it in the beginning, um, or any kind of a distortion. Um, the masters go back in for molding. So um, these are a superior product compared to anybody's bird heads. But maybe you don't want to buy your own bird head. Maybe you want to make your own bird head. And like I said to um, Corey, I said, we're going to show them how to make bird heads, you know. And he said, that's fine. They'll, <laughs> they will tire of that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, last week we showed you how to make um, a bird. Was that two weeks ago? Showed them how to make a bird head? Um, Showed them how to get it, and then last week we pulled one out. And then we showed them how to make eye rings. Yep, yep. And uh, um, wood duck, a wood duck just isn't a wood duck without the eye membrane around it, the eye ring. Why are you laughing at me? I, you said wood duck. I thought, uh, how much would, would a wood duck duck? <laughs> If a wood duck didn't have eye rings. <laughs> anyway, um, and there's a lot of different ways you can do that. We have uh, flex eyes, and mm -hmm. flex eyes have the eye ring on them. They're an actual flex eye like the fish yeah. eyes. And if you wanted to take, I guess I'd do a do-it-yourself, Wildlife Illusions head, the flex eyes do have a very large diameter, so you do have to take a Dremel and make that big enough to accept the eyes. And mm -hmm. you can use flex eyes, which have the rings on them. Yep. Otherwise, you can buy eye rings. Different companies sell eye rings, mm -hmm. and you can buy eye rings to put over. Um, otherwise, we showed you last week how to make them yourself. Mm -hmm. And we rolled out a uh, fix-it sculpt, yeah. put a little oil paint in it. There you have one right there. Right there. This one's a little stiff from and, last week. And, and they're good for a long time. The, you don't want to try to put them on right away because they're just a little too flimsy and wiggly and uh, so it's nice if they set up for just a little bit and then they're much easier to work with. But this was this is one of the Wildlife Illusions bird heads with um, eyes already preset in it and and uh, already preset in it and the eye rings are put on it. Yeah and then we showed them how to Dremel out their own So anyway, that's that's what we did last week, and that's yeah. kind of fun. We said, as you make eye rings, don't make one eye ring, don't make one pair of eye rings. Make, yeah. I made a dozen or more of them because all of a sudden one's just a little too big, one's a little too small, you know, or one's a little too thick and a little too thin. So it's kind of nice to to do them, yeah. a whole bunch of them. But anyway, that was the eye ring, and that was the wood duck head. Here's the you know, the wood, original wood duck that we took out was like this, and we left that neck on only for the purpose of showing you the union between the neck and the head. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only reason we left that on. It posed so naturally, and we, um, we uh, posed it. We support, we, we actually cast it, molded it different than we normally would for <coughs> any kind of head. We did it on its side yeah. um, just to get the neck on there for you. And then what you did with that one was cut the neck off and yep. did the eye. And we dremeled out the eye. We put a live eye um, in, in place of it, snipped the post off, got the depth, put that in place. I think we set it in a little bit of epoxy just to, so we had some play. And we left this backside eye that came from the original mold so we could set one against the other so we knew we had them at the right depth. And don't be afraid to uh, set your own eyes. You know, a lot of people are, are hesitant to do that. And uh, just like I explained to you last week, if this bird, if you look at the head when you have the eyes in, try to make them symmetrical. You don't need to worry about eye rotation and things like that. Um, when you're starting out, but if this, if you look at this bird, if you look straight on, I can tell he can see me. You can see enough of his pupil that I can tell he can see me. Um, 
If I look from the top, I can see there's a little cant. That bird wants to be able to see right out here. So that's kind of how I get, just like we talked about fish, um, a little bit similar to fish. They're very, um, they're a prey animal, animal that's preyed upon. So mm -hmm. their peripheral vision is probably their most important thing. And uh, they have to be able to see from behind. And by looking at this deer from behind, I can also see, he can see me way back here. You know, so that's important for the eyes. You want to, they want to be able to see behind them, but they also want to be able to see in front of them. Um, and they're not worried about sneaking up and biting that bobcat in the back end. You know, <laughs> so don't worry about the, the being a predator. They're not a predator. They're an animal or creature that's preyed upon. So this year we're going to share this week that we're going to show them feet, right? A year a year, this it'll take a year. A the way we process. do things, it'll take a year. Um, this week, we're going to show them how to do feet. And, yes. and uh, you can buy artificial feet. Harvey Moore makes a great artificial oh, bird yeah. feet. And I think they're injection molded. They're a very durable, strong foot. You can heat them up, bend mm -hmm. them. Um, and you can, we're going to show you how to make your own. McKinsey carries them. A lot of different companies carry, carry artificial feet. But uh, this is an example of a foot that we made. And if uh, I'm gonna set that there, if Kate can zoom in on these babies. These are some that we made of the wood duck that we did, mm -hmm. that we did last week. And um, they came out, now he's standing, they're not standing like they're gonna be, and we need to conform them to something also. But, um, you can't see them as, as good as we can, but accidentally, these came out near perfect, did <laughs> they not? That. Oh, that's pretty nice. Um, and these, these feet had been in the freezer. They're not, they're not fresh like the bird um, if we went out and collected him today. Yeah. And if you're doing one for competition, that's what I'd do. I'd the get, the, the better. get them as quick as you can. Um, if you can't work on them right away, maybe freeze them in water. Is that a good mm -hmm. idea? I think so, yeah. And, um, and also uh, um, just work on them before they've dried up. Now, these have been in the freezer, and they were in reasonably good shape, but there's a little bit of distortion there that, that uh, somebody wiser than me would pick out, I think, <laughs> upon inspection. But uh, these came out exceptionally, exceptionally nice, and uh, we're going to show you how to mold them, and we're going to show, or how to cast them, and we're going to show you how to make a mold to mold your own. Yep. Now, we've even gone, and in, in years past, we've even made uh, feet as big as a bald eagle. You know, and we've even used, we have that mold, and we have even used that mold over and over on other bald eagles for, um, we do a lot of fish, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service visitor centers, and um, we have used that mold several times. Learned that from doing pterodactyls, didn't you? Sure. <laughs> and this, nothing looks neater than a big old steelhead oh, yeah. clasped in the bald eagle's talons. Mm -hmm. That'd be a neat uh, But anyway, you can make, once you have the, the knowledge and the technology, if you want to call it, working with silicone rubbers and casting mm -hmm. materials, there's a myriad of different companies that make all kinds of um, different RTV rubbers and casting materials and bronze casting materials, and it's great for the sculptors and all kinds of different things. But anyway, that was an eagle foot. So we're going to do this a little backwards, right? I think so. I think that would this be is going to get a little show. confusing. We'll try to explain it as good as we could can. But uh, so what we did, um, what we did leading up till today mm -hmm. is we made a mold to make a wood duck foot. We made a mold to make this, and we're going to show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. But first, we're going to show you what the mold looks like, and we're going to show you taking a cast part out of the mold. So it's a little backwards. You have to have this before you can make the wood duck feet, yep. but we're gonna show you how we made a wood duck feet foot first <laughs> and take it out of here. So 
Do you want the honors? It's kind of fun. Sure, that's um, in that's here is a cast wood duck foot, and I'm going to give it to you, and you can I will show them how to take it apart. Yeah, provided yeah. provided it's good. <laughs> provided it comes out. See, I don't know if this is going to be good or not. It might be full of yes. air bubbles, and it might be bad. So I'm going to give it to you. But that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we made the mold ahead of time. Um, because it had to cure and so that we can show them all of these additional steps. So the mold was made earlier in the week, yep. um, but it was made in two parts. So you have the big part of the foot, the top portion, and then a bottom piece. And this just comes right, ooh, comes right off. We get lucky so far. It looks like there might oh, be a little Oh, we got a little, little, a little bubble. bubble. Not bad. So I'm just going to work around here, just get some of this loosened up. And be careful with your rubber molds. We've talked about that with some of the people in the shop, that um, metal tools and rubber molds are be very delicate. Don't, you don't want to wreck your mold before you ever get your good part out. Now you notice as Brett's doing that, um, that foot is pretty orange, pretty yellowy orange. It's about this color, and uh, all that is is um, resin dye, and uh, you put a little resin dye in one of your components of your urethanes, your A and your B, and um, stir it up. Then when you mix it together, you can make this any color you want. And that's, that's pretty handy, having something pre-colored, your pre-colored base, um, and we'll get more into that next week when mm -hmm. we talk about coloring them, but... Um, I'm just working this loose. Am I doing it right? And Kate, yeah, um, part those little toenails. Um, and Caitlin's going to ask us what's on for next week. And we're ahead of you this time. <laughs> that is awesome. Next week, we are going to show you how to color your feet to completion and how to, um, how to color your bird heads, your bills. And a lot of, we have a lot of people call in and they're afraid to do that. And that's why they don't use artificial feet because they're scared to paint they're them. Afraid to they're color. scared yeah. to use an airbrush and they're, you know, just a lot of, lot of different things. You go ahead okay. and cut that no, little knob yep. off the top and I I'll get an air worked. compressor. Now, Kate, you might show them and we'll come back to this and explain it. But there's a little reservoir here the Tom's made in the top for pouring. And that's not a part of this. So this extra reservoir I have to cut off because it's attached right here now and it won't pull through. So if I just reach up in there, I hope I'm not working outside of your picture. Now these don't have to be, but they were made in a pressure pot and that's what that little reservoir is for. If, if you have air bubbles in there, it'll force the air bubbles to the top yep. and if the reservoir will fill it up. Yep. So now we have that. That's all free. I think this is free. You good to go? I think so. The dew claw is not quite popped out, but it's open. Um, all of the toes seem like they're gonna give. You want to add some? Sure. Um, this is, I want to show people, when we lose this air chuck, is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. It's a rubber nozzled air chuck, and it has helped us in the shop um, get horns off of, sheaths off of horn cores, um, get molds apart. Um, we use it in here. That rubber is just invaluable yeah. to us, and we've had it around a long time, and if we lose yeah. this, we get panicky. This concentrates your air to a very small area, so it puts a lot of pressure, and you can poke it down in there. And, and they come in a lot of different formations, but this rubber tip is pretty important. Mm -hmm. All right, let me All right. try shooting this out. I'm just going to put a little air in here, and you'll, you'll feel the, when you do it, you'll feel it break loose. You ready? Hold on. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> It's going to come out. There it goes. 
And there we go. Wow. So you actually have the tendon. You can see that little tendon that runs along the back side of the bubble? I'm one little air bubble in that one though, right? Yep, yep. Little air bubble up in the front corner, but other than that, this is a pretty nice foot. And look at a full dew claw. And the toenails are there. Complete. We may have lost a toenail right there. Now that little flashing is so thin that you can oh, wipe, almost yeah. wipe it off with wipe your fingers. Wipe it right off. Um, or I just take a knife and kind of gently scrape along it and yeah. it'll come right off. That is nice. Now you notice on, when we made these, there's no wire in here. And um, when we mount the bird, we really don't need this bone. No. Um, we just set it up that way just to have it. Um, to use this, what I would do is I would snip that bone off and then I would take a small drill bit to start mm -hmm. with and I would drill up through the foot and then mm -hmm. I would send a wire up through there, measure this distance for when we mounted on the bird and then I would have my artificial foot with the wire coming out. Yeah. Now the other thing you can do is, and you were talking about it earlier, run a wire right down through your mold and pour the plastic pour around it. Into it. And that would be, that would be a, now a look how little that. foot like a wood duck. It might not work very well, but on a bigger, on a bigger bird where you've got some wiggle room to bury that wire, that, that could be really good. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? There you go. Just gonna switch it over there and show you that. Anyway, that's kind of a, you get excited. Um, anytime you get into, for me, anytime you get into molding and casting, I can't wait to get to work in the morning to see what I got. Yep. And like I was running down to the pressure pot all day long today, um, I made a white one and I thought, oh, that white one came out so good. I'm gonna make a colored one. So I put in a little yellow coloring and ooh, I really like that. Okay. And then I thought, I'm gonna make it a little richer yeah, in color. Yeah. So we made these and uh, I've got, I got a lot of uh, left-footed deer, or <laughs> left-footed um, <laughs> ducks. Does. Um, but anyway, you can always save these. You can save yeah. them, use them over and over and over. Oh, sure. And yeah. um, any of you that are saying that's fine if your bird's a flat-footed bird, but what are you going to do if he's on a limb? Um, you take a heat gun or a hair dryer. We were playing okay. with this just before we started. And um, you can warm that up. And you'll want to be careful that you bend it at the knuckles. Yeah. But you can bend that at the knuckles and, and shape this around a branch or to your rock or to your yep. mud scene or whatever. Yeah, lots of flexibility there. So you said you've got a lot of left-footed wood ducks. Should we show them how oh, to make the right? Do. do we have any questions? We don't have any questions yet. We have a lot of people tuning in saying hi. These people hi. know stuff. <laughs> Blake Gonnering says, hey, Tom and Brett, how are you guys doing hi, today? Hi Blake. hi, Blake. I haven't hi, seen you in a long time. And if you have any questions, now is the perfect time to um, type them in and we will, well, the taxidermist will answer them. Okay. Um, okay, this is, some of you people that mold for a living are gonna look at what we do and say that is the dumbest way we've ever seen anybody do this. Um, but we have a, the other foot and our thinking was um, we need to keep it spread and if it's just laying in the silicone rubber it's going to fold up and that's yep. not what we want and so we need it spread so we took let me tell you what we took this is a <laughs> product and a half I went to the store and I thought I want a little better um, duct tape than what they make. So I don't want to do an advertisement for Gorilla Tape, but this is like the strongest, <laughs> strongest duct tape. It it's so strong you can hold gorillas with this stuff. Not it's just ducks, no, gorillas. This is tough stuff. Anyway, so we took the Gorilla Tape 
and I wrapped it around and around, sticky side up the board. Mm -hmm. Because I'm gonna take this foot and we're gonna spread it. You might need to take this and get my little skin. I, I might be able to do it, but if I can't, you might have to prod my little skin out to the side. That's that little toe skin? Yeah. That I did it a with name. a pin last time and it worked real good. So I'm just gonna start a toe. Better start up here. And I'm pushing that right onto the sticky part of the tape. Now if you can, uh -huh. I'm gonna be in the way, if you can work that skin out of there and push it down. Sticky stuff, isn't it? It is. How about this guy, would this work? Yeah, I might have to have something like that. Yeah, there you go. And then we do have a question that just came in from Christopher, and he is wondering which type of paint do you use oh. for the yellow color? Um, that's, well, that's, that's a good question. That's a really good question, Christopher. And that is um, resin dye. And that is, can I tell them? Yeah, absolutely. That's our giveaway for today is resin dye. And it um, comes in a whole bunch of different colors. And the lucky winner, did I get it? I think so, yeah, that looks really good. The lucky winner of the resin dye, we're gonna give away a yellow, and we're gonna give away a tan also. And you can mix these, and you can do all kinds of different combinations of them. And uh, you get two colors. But these are formulated specifically for urethanes, aren't they? Yes. All right, now that foot, that went, well, not gonna do it. <laughs> gonna be smart and lift it up. Now we gotta do it again. And then Fred Burt is wondering if that is injected. No. No. No, but it could be. Um, depending upon how fresh your foot was, if you found that you wanted to get it a little bit more um, plump, you might have a little shrinkage. Um, you could inject it. You can inject water, or I suppose I could actually inject casting Master's Blend in it if they wanted to. I think if I injected it, I, th I think that's a good idea to inject them if you did it carefully and then cast it as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. And then I think make sure that whatever you inject it with, uh, make sure that it's not gonna ooze out into right. your mold. Okay, I'm not gonna lift him up and be smart this time. Okay, now that, that foot is on there and it's not gonna, not gonna come off until I want it to. All right, now, the other thing, let's see. Can I show them that thing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now you notice, you notice in the in the large portion of the foot, um, I have this trench around here, and in the bottom of the foot. Now we wouldn't have needed a bottom of the foot. We could have poured the whole thing. Could have. But it gives you the right thickness, doesn't yeah. it? Um, so you see this rubber ring, it's part of this mold. Mm -hmm. And to make that, we went to the hardware store and got, got uh, copper tubing, mm -hmm. small diameter copper tubing, and we bent it in a duck foot. I'm gonna be barely big enough over where I'm at, I'm gonna, I better check that my cup will go around there, do you think? Oh, sure. That's the same one that went around there. I know, but I got to see that. Uh, I'm going to cut the bottom out of this cup quickly here just so I can measure. I know, but I'm too close with my bird foot to the edge, am I? You'll be fine. I think you were close on this one. <laughs> Didn't work? I think so. I think you're in good shape. Ooh, that's going to be a close one. All right. So 
we take the copper tubing, situate it around the foot, like so. And now, because this tape is so <laughs> sticky, because that tape's so sticky, it's gonna hold that copper tight. And when we make that mold, and we take the bottom portion off, we're gonna end up with something like this. We're, <coughs> the foot will <coughs> still be in there, and then we'll have the copper tubing in there. Uh -huh. We're gonna pull that copper tubing out, leave the foot in, and we're gonna pour the bottom portion. The rubber is gonna run down in the trench void made by removing the copper tubing, uh -huh. and these two snap right together and your resin does not leak out. That's impressive. That's, <clears throat> that's one of the tougher parts of the casting process that you've solved there. Okay, now, the hard part is not having a leaker. Ha <laughs> we've had some leakers. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this on. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be stand on, we really need to move that whole thing that way. But we won't. So now you are capturing a wood duck's foot. Whole foot. Okay. All the way around. Caitlin, I'm gonna put this towards your camera, and if you can zoom in on that. Can you see inside of it? Oh yeah, look at that. Nice camera work. Now that, yeah, that bone and that foot are not at the angle that we want. So we're gonna have to support it. Oh, also, a, also, oh, also, we have tape, and you wrap that tape around that sticky tape, and you're gonna have, you're gonna have, you're gonna be stuck on everything. <laughs> Yes, you and everything that you touch and it. me, baby, are stuck like a wood duck's foot. And so what we did was took paper, put paper on the bottom of the tape, so I can set this down and move it around. Aren't you fancy? Well, I, I didn't stuck. See you do I've that. done all this stuff so poorly before that you gotta, you gotta. Okay, now let's take one of these nice Euro pins, and can you take, do we have that big tweezers anywhere? Or um, there we I go, let me grab it, I might have you, sure? you help me here. Okay. Worth noting too, when you're spreading the foot, um, look at your reference material. A lot of you guys that are be, gonna be casting feet are gonna do this for competition. Look, it's worth looking at the amount that they're spread and where they're spread from, how wide they are or how narrow they are. Um, look at your reference material and make sure that your attitude is. It's a little like fish fins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My philosophy on fish fins is I want happy customers mm -hmm. and fish fins are like butterfly wings. So if I had a butterfly on my wall, I want those wings spread. Nice and spread. And it's been my experience, customers, though the fish seldom has all his fish fins spread, and he's using them for different purposes, I have cultivated happier customers with nice, beautiful cool fins. fins. Yeah. Though it's not realistic, it's the one time I will deviate from realism. All right, if you would do this, if you mm -hmm. would grab a hold of his little leg bone and pull it up, show me where it is, I'm gonna take a pin through the back of this wall. And you can stand it up pretty straight. We'll bend it later. Like so, okay, good. And I'm gonna poke that pin in. How'd I do? Good. And the audience is wondering, I could say you did great or anything because they can't see. Should we show them? Uh, let me get this in. Then, I'm going to take this little bone, and, or a little wire, and I'm going to stick it in there. And 
going right in the top of the bone. Maybe I will. Yeah, that looks, there you go. This is completely unrehearsed. How did I do? Good. Wow. If you'd have told me we were gonna do that on camera, I'd have been nervous. Okay, now, can I show you again? This is just pushing right against his ankle, right there. I just have that pin poked in there that holds it. And then, we stuck a wire down his leg bone, and that's going to hold it right here. It doesn't matter what you do, just so, so it stays. To it. Yep. Now, did you get that? Now, I can shake this all over the place and it moves. We don't want that. So, I'm going to move that. That better. Mm -hmm. Give me some of this tremendous Gorilla Glue. Catch a gorilla. Wood duct tape. Oh, you know what we need to do anyway? Hot glue the perimeter. We were going to overfill that. Never mind. Okay, I'm going to just put this tape here. Now it can't move. There you go. Hot glue the perimeter. I specifically told Brett before we started, whatever you do, don't <laughs> let me forget. We got to glue around the perimeter. All right, we have a couple customer questions that have come in and one in, or sorry, not customer questions, live viewer <laughs> questions. Um, first one is from Richard and he is wondering how you can save a skinned out turkey to mount later. A skinned oh, out turkey, freeze it? I would say so. I'm Just assuming, freeze it. Yeah, freeze it, feathers out, um, plastic, put it in a garbage bag. Um, try and get it as airtight as possible and get it to your taxidermist as quick as you can. Awesome. And then we have one more from James. And James is wondering if you can mold the foot that's curved for setting on a log or something. Does it have to be flat? That's a good question. I have always, I've been playing in my mind, should we make rocks with feet attached or logs with feet attached, I think we could, mm -hmm. and I think they'd be very popular. Um, I don't know, we heat these up with a heat gun and they can form pretty fast. Yeah. You can conform it to whatever you want to. If you had an extreme bend, you, they could probably take a portion of something and curl that around yeah. and mold it around that curl, but um, you're gonna present a few different problems. I'd say maybe get a couple extras and practice. This is a perfect place to leak because I situated it much too close to the edge of the board. Um, we do a lot of silicone molding, a lot. And the one thing I always say to Brett is if, you're gonna, if you start with a little leak, you'll never stop it. It'll leak and leak and leak and leak. So the best thing you can do is tape it, wheeze a little. I'm just going around the perimeter with hot glue and uh, that's going to seal up that bottom because if you have a little pinhole leak, it'll be drained by morning and all of your yes. rubber will have leaked out. Um, these longer setting rubbers are really, really nice for, for pouring and degassing and, and all of that, but they typically take longer to set. So if they start leaking, they're gonna leak for several hours. We carry a RTV tin-based silicone rubber that is really user-friendly. And uh, it's real fun to make things out of. And it's not as complicated as some of the other ones. Very, very forgiving. Thin and easy to pour. Um, easy to mix. 
Fred says, yes, make them molded with rocks. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think you could. One of our nice oh, little bases. Oh, here we go. Oh, here, Phil Helms. Right now, I can see he is listening, <laughs> tuning in. Um, and you're going to see it in the McKinsey catalog within, since, oh, within fall. But um, yeah, I think that could be done. I think it could. It could be done very well. I don't want to color them on the rock. That would be a little trick here. Oh, you're talking about making them in one piece. One piece, the rock and feet on a it. Wood duck rock. Might as well put a bird body on it too, and a yeah. neck and a head. <laughs> that, um, check that, that over. Check that over and see what you think. If it's good to go, or if we got to patch any spots. Um, we're just looking for leakers, and if I had one leak last night, it leaked like crazy. They don't quit. Oh. We pour rubber in quantity. Every day. Almost, yeah, darn near every day. I think you're pretty good. Good to go? I think so. I hope so. We'll know in the morning. I think you're pretty good. There might be one little spot along that tape line. If we can push that tape line together. Oh, just Maybe push just, it together? Okay. If it tries to follow that tape. All right. Now, the RTV silicone rubber that we use is very white and it's very thick. And I poured this out, it's 23 ounces. Kind of like chocolate syrup. Yeah. Kind of like melted Lots. marshmallows. Yeah. Um, now, it's ten, you have to catalyze this. There's a lot of different lot of different silicones. Some of them are 50-50, you mix A and B together, and some of them are, um, you add a catalyst to them. Okay, I'm just making sure everything is in place. Um, this one you add a catalyst to. So you add 10% of weight catalyst to the silicone resin. The catalyst will look like this. And 10% of 23 is 2.3. And we told you last week, um, make sure you know that um, one pound, six ounces isn't 1.6 or whatever. Change everything yeah. to ounces and make sure that your catalyst and your um, resin or your silicone is all measured in ounces. So I'm going to do 2.3. Got a little scale here. And we've had all kinds of things happen before. We've had uh, springs stick on the scales before. And... Want to mix? Sure. Do we have a stick? Look at all these. I do. I know. Brand yeah. new clean one. Oh, look at that. Look at all these feet we got going. We got feet. We've got heads. We can do a flock of wood ducks. You know, every year... In the fall, I always managed, whether, whether I was looking or not, I always managed to have a live crippled duck. And I didn't cripple these ducks, I would find them. You know, they'd either be on the shore and, and, or whatever, mm -hmm. or sitting, sitting on the side of the road. And one time I got a, the most beautiful gadwall I've ever seen in my Ooh. life. And I'd bring them in and I'd put a little kid's swimming pool in the shop. And they don't like it to begin with. They're kind of skittish and everything, but eventually they will tame down enough to sit on, you know, a rock or a log in the swimming pool. And as I was working, I would always be, you know, I might be sewing up a deer head, but I would always be looking at the bird. And I've had teal, I've had beautiful wood ducks, I've had mandarins. Yep, yeah, mandarins, gadwalls. Some of them we raised, a lot of cripples. And um, one of the most surprising thing to me was my wood duck always stood on his own feet. And it was very interesting to oh. see. He would very often stand at rest and he would have his feet one over the other like that. And I don't think you'd want to mount that for a competition, but um, it was kind of fascinating to see how they stand. Um, I think I'm pretty well mixed here. 
I've scraped down the sides. I've scooped up the bottom. Um, I think I've got a pretty good mix. Our catalyst is colored. So that's showing me that it looks like it's, although it's very light, um, it looks like I've got a pretty even mixture, kind of like Bondo. When you mix Bondo, you can tell when you're thoroughly mixed because the hardener color is completely transform the body color. Now the RTV silicone rubber that we have, I think is a 20 shore, which is pretty soft. It's, it's very soft mm -hmm. compared to a hockey puck would be 80. 80. 80 shore, you know, and that's, you measure shore with a durometer. A durometer is an instrument that measures the hardness of rubber. Um, anyway, this is 20, so it's very, very soft. It's exceptional for the majority of the things that we do, um, but it may not be exactly what you need for certain um, applications. So kind of check out the shore um, for how hard you want it. And... Um, also, the silicone that, that we have here does not need degassing. I'm going to put this in a vacuum chamber, and we've showed you that before, but I'm going to put it in the vacuum chamber, mm -hmm. and we're going to suck the air bubbles out of it. And it'll take just a couple minutes to suck the air bu bubbles out. Um, you do not need to. Um, this one, the air will float to the top, and it is good for people that don't have a vacuum chamber. So I'm going to take the lid off the chamber. I'm going to put it in now. Because I'm at probably 24 ounces an hour more, um, I'm going to have to watch it because it's going to want to come out the top. So as I turn it on, I'm watching my gauge. And my gauge is in, I think it's called inches of helium and it's going to come all the way around and I think I think a perfect vacuum is 29.9 or something like that a negative 29.9 and right now my my silicone rubber is bubbling and coming to the top and you'll make a big mess of your vacuum chamber if you don't stop it before it gets to the top like now we're going to let that sit for just a a few minutes while we talk about a couple other things. And now, oops, better go a little more. I let a little air back into the chamber and um, it's just all the air bubbles in it have just risen to the top and they're just popping as they come, mm -hmm. come to the top and they call that degassing. And some silicones are, you can't use them without a vacuum yeah. chamber. Yep. So depending on what product you're using, check with the manufacturer, whether you're out with Smooth-On or um, Loomlight or um, Polytech, there's all kinds of different companies. Check with them if you need a chamber because you might waste a lot of money on a vacuum or on a silicone that you can't use. So we're going to let that degas a little bit and everything is still Nice and sturdy in here. Nothing moves. And you know what we didn't do? We didn't put our little reservoir thing on the top. Should we do that? Oh, yeah. Let me grab some clay. Craig Metz is wondering if we would ever consider doing a future video on antler reproductions. Oh, no. gosh. No, <laughs> no, no. There's um, people that do that for a living. That's right. Very well. Um, no, huge undertaking, huge, huge undertaking there. But um, most of the principles would apply to what we're doing today um, in antlers or any other parts. You're going to have to tailor some of this to your specific needs. No, the reason I say no is I have attempted more than once um, antler reproductions and I, I am pretty versed in the process. 
pretty versed in the process and I've not had the best okay. success with it. So um, that's why didn't didn't mean to say no, 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 but, <laughs> but um, that's not my area of expertise. I have there are some tried and failed, right? And, and the method that we actually, the method that I, we used to do, we used to use Thixotropic and you'd spatulate it on mm -hmm. and it was dreadful. It took coat after coat after sure. coat. Then you had to build a mother mold of some sort and things like that. It didn't, didn't work well for me. And um, now I'm all the way up to like 29.9 and, and it's just bubbling a lot. We'll let it sit for another few minutes here. Um, now... We do a lot of what's called bladder molds, and you can Google bladder molds, and I think what we do now on all of our um, habitat pieces is probably more complicated than what we used to do for the, for the antlers, but I've nearly went broke <laughs> buying silicone and having leaks and having it run all over the place and scraping it off the floor and trying to put it back in and things like that. But um, that's a big job, and, and now you gotta remember the, the thing with like our bird molds and things like that, the, the rubber molds, these don't last as long as people think. They're not yeah. good for indefinitely. Um, I would say we can probably make this foot, we might get 35 to 40 feet out of it before we would have to redo it. So you'd wanna keep a really perfect one for maybe a master if yeah. you want, if you think this is a good, thing and you want to redo it. But same with antlers, you're pouring a lot. I mean, an, the rubber that goes in the antlers is probably going to be maybe oh, 400 bucks, 350 to $400. Yeah. And yeah. what happened to mine was I was taking it off of the real antlers and I pulled a whole rubber tine off. Oh. And then all my rubber was wasted and I got angry and no threw it on the shelf it. and <laughs> that did not go so well. All right, I'm going to go with this. Now this is a two-piece mold, so this is the first part of a two-piece mold. Do you want to do it? Sure. And we might need a little bit more to get up past our clay. Oh, I bet you're good. Maybe. All right. And I'm just going to pour right onto one spot. I'm going to pour fairly slow. And it's going to push air out ahead of it. The idea is that it'll force the air before it traps it, it'll force it out and up. If you were to just dump it on, you're gonna trap a lot of air and it's gonna have to degas on its own. But you can help it by not trapping air and letting it travel on its own a little slower. Now I've got it rising pretty fast. It's all the way around the foot. So now I'm just gonna start pouring a little bit faster and let it rise on its own. Can't we make musculars like this? I hope so. <laughs> that, I hope that's so. The plan. <laughs> Butch is wondering if the RTV you are using right now is the one that we sell in our catalog. It is. It, it sure is. is. Gonna need a little more? We are gonna need more. I thought we were doing pretty good. I guess it's bigger on the top. You talk, I'm on it. And then Craig, I don't know exactly where you're located and you're not gonna see this comment, but Jim Rikes on YouTube is tuning in and he said, if you're interested um, in the antler repair or reproductions to check out TK Taxidermy in Lakeville, Minnesota. Craig is not too far. Craig is from Ballatin, Minnesota. Oh, perfect. So he's pretty close to yeah. both us and Lakeville. Very nice. we go. Looks like we're about an inch short of the top, inch that and a quarter, hard. about that far. That's what we need on the narrow part. Yeah. And we're just going to try to get to Tom's little sprue on the top. How much? Sure. More? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe a little, <laughs> maybe a little tiny bit more. Just in case, just in case. Um, the good thing is I don't see any leaks. Um, this is the time where you would start seeing there's the more volume you have, the more pressure it creates. And so it will start, you'll start seeing little creepy pinholes 
um, of rubber that are starting to stream out and I don't see any. That's impressive. Okay. Now we'll make just a little bit more. I've got a mixer stick. Okay, we've got 14 ounces. Everybody, what's 14 ounces worth of catalyst? Waiting, 10%. 10%, 14 ounces, you viewers out there. Anybody gonna comment it in? Not yet, let's see. No. You're not we a viewer. Have to catch up. <laughs> Was right? She's the live studio audience. Wow, Tom was going to give away a car. I Maybe was. I was going to give away something really big, but, but now Mandy gets it. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to give that one to the okay. studio audience. Go ahead. Um, good. No leaks. No leaks. Look at that. And it, the foot hasn't floated up to the top or nothing. Nothing's more disheartening than to get really excited and use a whole lot of rubber and pour a beautiful mold and you're so happy and you can't wait till tomorrow and you go home and you come up and it's all laying on the floor next day. We've done that. <laughs> We've done that kind of recently. Got Craig Robertson that says 20 milliliters, I'm thinking that's what the ML is for. The Butch says 1.4 and Fred says 1.4. Got it. These guys are on it. Too bad Mandy already drove away in the new car. <laughs> Um, Craig, what time must it be in Australia? Shouldn't you even be in bed? I'll collect tomorrow. <laughs> About now? It's got to be late there, or early. I think it's morning. It's Friday morning there. Getting up, having coffee. Watching oh my goodness. Tom and Brett, yeah. He's tomorrow. He's got tomorrow. It. Oh my gosh. Okay, there now this go. one, because we don't have a very... Um, full cup, we can run it all the way up, we won't have to stop. I'm gonna vacuum that. I can do it. Just in case, you probably wouldn't have to. Um, this is, this rubber is very, very forgiving. But since it's here, we'll vacuum these. Now, the best, best thing about any of this, uh, rubbers like this is when you're using them, and you get a mess and it runs where you didn't want it, like all over that bird head. Um, <laughs> we'll just leave that and tomorrow morning it'll peel off, it'll just peel right like, off. it'll peel right off. That is the nice thing about silicone. I have heard it said more than once that it doesn't stick to anything. It sticks to some things. It but. does, <laughs> unless you don't want it to. If you don't want it to stick to something, it will. But we did not, that's another thing we should tell them, we did not use a mold release on these. Um, it should release from the foot naturally. We may use a release on the cast part, but um, for the real foot, we did not use a mold release. Um, yes, and that's a good thing you brought that up. Um, the original sil silicone that we use, rarely, rarely do we use a mold release on that of any kind. Um, if we did want a mold release, um, we have two pref preferred products. One's Isocote. We use a lot of Isocote. And the other one is Stoner Rapid Release. Um, both of those work good. But like you said, what you will want to use a release on is making the foot and getting the foot out of here. We do anyway. Um, you don't have to, and it will come out, but... I don't think you're going to get near as many out of it. Yeah, I think if they were trying to get more than one, your first one will be really good, you hope, but if in the case you had a tiny little air bubble on the side and wanted to pour one more, it'd be nice to have a release in it. That way you don't do any damage to the mold mm -hmm. coming out. And now it depends on what release you're using, but they make, they make uh, um, releases that are paintable. Mm -hmm. And I had one company tell me to put all of our parts in the dishwasher. We're making hundreds of bird heads. <laughs> and they said, um, get the release off, just put them, run them through a dishwater cycle. And I, I can't imagine our uh, manufacturing people washing all their bird heads. But that was a suggestion. Mm -hmm. But um, 
you will want to on some of your parts if you have if you're using one of these releases that has silicone in it or something and you plan on painting them make sure that you scrub them off with lacquer thinner yep okay this should be good so we're going to top off the mold a yes. little bit and then next week we'll show them how to for the cast? Yes, and paint. We're going to paint, paint, and we're going to paint with uh, probably Createx, and we're going to paint mm -hmm. with Pan Pastels. All kinds of good stuff. Perlex to put a little glitter on your feet. <laughs> a little makeup. Um, lots and lots and lots of ways to restore color, um, but we'll probably also show them how to color their cast. Sure. Um, to make a nice base coat. You want to go over the top or I right perfect. to the top? I think like you got it's exceptional. Perfect. Now, when, when we made these little guys, hand me one of them orange mm -hmm. feet. When we made these, um, we took a irrig irrigation syringe with the curved tip irrigation syringe, and because you're pouring it down this little bitty hole, you won't pour it, the casting resin will clog this and you won't, you won't fill this before it sets up. So we took the irrigation syringe, um, sucked up the mixed material, stuck it way down there and slowly injected so it would run all the way down here. And then what works pretty good is to take your, your foots like this, squeeze that and it squeezes out a whole bunch of bubbles and then it sucks in the other stuff. So if you keep squeezing, you can get it down to um, most of the toes and most of the extremities. And that's a nice, nice part. Nice. Look part. at that, and, and this, this peels right off. What a great, great start for a base color for a wood duck foot. Those are nice. Okay, and that's it for today. Um, we got to give away our dyes, and we've got a tan and a yellow alumalite resin dye. Yes, and the, and the winner for that. What do they got to do to win? So to win, they ha for next week's live, they have to like and share this video. And the winner of this week's giveaway goes to Grover Burden, and Grover wins the bright yellow and tan resin dyes. So he shared and liked last week's live video. Now Grover, that, that resin dye will work in the casting resin. It'll work in clear scenery resin. Mm -hmm. It'll work in um, kind of any kind of resins that you want, any fiberglass resin, any kind of resins. Mm -hmm. um, you mix it up in one part and then mix A and B together. And um, you'll like it. It'll, it'll, you won't even know it's in there except the color. I mean, it doesn't do any, there's, it's user friendly. All right, and then we also had a pack mount contest that we did um, over the weekend last week. So we're gonna announce the winner for that. And the winner goes to Chip Went. Wow. Um, as you can see his uh, mount there, we loved seeing all I of voted the... for that, I voted <laughs> for that. that. Yeah, that's neat. It was fun to see all the submissions, and thank you to everybody who participated. Congratulations, in that. Chip! That was pretty yeah, nice. That's neat. So a we... map. Who uses a map anymore? <laughs> that is that is um, like you do all antique yep. stuff. You know, yep. that's kind of definitely a vintage. sign of the times. Yeah. Congratulations, Chip! Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, see you next week when we're going to show you how to color some of these artificial yeah. parts that you made.